much for the opportunity to be here to testify today. I have seven basic points that I would like to make today. The first point is that the welfare state in the United States is simply enormous. Last year, <coughs> or this year in fiscal 2008, federal, state, and local governments spend $679 billion on means-tested welfare assistance to poor and low-income pe uh, people. Total means-tested welfare spending this year considerably exceeded the entire uh, budget of the Defense Department, including all expenditures on the war on Iraq. Since the beginning of the war on poverty, the United States has spent over $14 trillion on means-tested assistance to the poor, uh, and over the next 10 years, if current expenditure levels continue, we will spend $9 trillion on assistance to the poor, providing cash, food, housing, medical care, and uh, targeted social services. As a result of that $9 trillion, we can expect, as we have found in the past, that the capacity of low-income people to support themselves will actually go down. Point number two, most so-called poor people in the United States are not poor in any normally understood sense of the word. For most Americans, the word poverty suggests dis destitution and inability to provide food, basic shelter, or clothing. But if that's what you mean by poverty, virtually none of the 37 million people defined as poor by the Census Bureau in fact meet that, st that criteria. My favorite statistics from the government's own data on the poor is that two-thirds of them have cable and satellite television. According to the government's own data, the typical American defined as poor by the government has a car, air conditioning, refrigerator, stove, clothes washer, dryer, microwave. This individual has two color televisions, cable or satellite TV, has a VCR and a DVD player and a stereo. By his own report, he's able to obtain medical care for his family whenever needed. His home is in good repair and is not overcrowded. By his own report, his family is not and has not been hungry, and that he has had sufficient funds to meet all his family's essential needs. While this individual's lifestyle is certainly not opulent, it is extremely far from the popular images of dire poverty promoted by activists. Point number three. The United States does not have a higher poverty level than countries in Europe. Statistics that, pur that purport to show that uh, use a, a skewed standard in which poverty is uh, more difficult to escape from in the U.S. because the hurdle is higher here than in other countries. If you use a uniform standard, the income of, low in of the bottom of the U.S. population is roughly similar to that of most European countries. Point number four. Poverty levels in the United States remain high because the United States is currently aggressively importing poverty from abroad through both legal and illegal immigration. One startling statistic is when we hear about, for example, poor children in the census, uh, no one realizes that one out of eight of the poor children in the United States as measured by the census is actually the child of an illegal immigrant. Over the last 15 years, through both legal and illegal immigration, we have imported 12 million high school dropouts into the United States. These are, they cause a massive increase in welfare expenditures, and currently one out of four poor people in the United States is an immigrant who we have brought here from abroad. <coughs> It is impossible for us to reduce poverty if we are aggressively importing it as rapidly as we can from other nations. Point five, the major child of, ch cause of child poverty in the United States is the high level of out of wedlock childbearing. In the last measured year, 38% of American children were born out of wedlock. If the mothers of those children were actually married to the fathers of the, of the child, the actual father of the child, 70% of them would immediately be raised out of poverty. But we will do nothing whatsoever to correct this problem because promoting marriage is politically incorrect in our country. Point six, the second major cause of poverty is very low levels of parental work. In any given year, it does not vary much from one year to another. When you look at poor families with children, there's only about six or 700 hours, maybe 800 hours of work in that family per year. That's si about 16 hours a week. The family is poor because no one is working very much. If you raise that family to the point where labor in the family was the equivalent of one worker, just one, working full-time, full year, 
75 percent of those families would be immediately raised out of poverty without any additional expenditure from the taxpayer. Point seven, in order to reduce poverty, we need to address the root causes of poverty, not merely the symptoms by handouts. That means we must address low-skill immigration, the collapse of marriage, and the very low work effort of low-income families. Our goal should not be to reduce poverty, but to promote prosperous self-sufficiency, to pr promote a society in which individuals can support themselves above the poverty line without endless and ever-expanding handouts from the taxpayer. Thank you very much.